Welcome back to the Curiosity Workshop. In the previous video, we installed the library, the X-Plane plugin, and also tested the installation with one of the example sketches. In this video, we will discuss the outline of an XPL Pro sketch and expand on the beacon demo by adding a switch to the Arduino to control the nav lights within X-Plane. Let's get started. This tutorial assumes basic understanding of the Arduino IDE encoding However, if you are new to programming, the examples provide an excellent guideline for implementing your ideas. Load the example sketch XPL Pro Tutorial Part 2 in the Arduino IDE. This example was created during the production of this video, so if you downloaded the examples previously, you may need to download the examples again to get this one. You can see the xplpro.h library being included here. This line creates an instance of the XPL Pro library, which we'll call XP. Ampersand Serial is the primary serial port on the board, which connects with the PC running XPlane. Data refs are how we exchange data to and from XPlane. There are many data refs available, and you can go to the XPlane data ref website to browse the database. In this example, we will make use of two data refs, one to receive the status of the beacon light and one to adjust the status of the nav lights. To make future changes easier and otherwise maintain organization, we can create names to reference the pins on the Arduino board. In this case, I am using pin 24 for my switch to control the nav lights. One side of the switch should go to this pin and the other needs to connect to a ground pin. Each data ref and command we register will be referenced by a handle when we read or write to it. These integer variables will contain those handles when we register the data refs and commands. Pins on the Arduino board need to be configured depending on how we plan to use them. We are going to turn on and off the built-in LED to represent the status of the beacon light, so it needs to be configured as an output pin. For the nav light, we are going to read the status of the pin to let X-Plane know whether or not navigation lights are on or off, so we need to configure this pin to be input. When the switch is off and not connecting the pin to ground, the value input pull up will pull the pin away from ground so that the value doesn't float and act erratically. This line initializes the serial port and XPL baud rate must be used as that is the rate that the plugin expects to see when it communicates with the Arduino board. This line initializes the XPL Pro system. The first parameter is a name that will be sent to the plugin to identify this Arduino device. Since the XPL Pro system supports multiple Arduino devices, this allows you to separate them by name for debugging and monitoring purposes. The second parameter is the name of a function that we will provide that will be called when XPL Pro is ready to receive data ref and command registrations from the Arduino board. The third parameter is a function that will be called when X-Plane shuts down or unloads the current aircraft. Usually this isn't needed, but if it is there if you need to do things such as return your instruments to zero for instance. The final parameter is a function that will be called when XPL Pro has detected changes in data coming from X-Plane that we have requested be sent. More on the function callbacks will be discussed later in the video. Within the loop function of your sketch, the most important thing is that XLOOP is called very regularly as it handles incoming serial data and the data buffers are relatively small. Don't add delays to your loop as it can cause data loss due to buffer overloads. While not totally necessary depending on the nature of your intended use, we can increase the amount of time that XLOOP is running by decreasing the interval of when the rest of the loop runs. In this case, we are allowing everything past this line to run only every 100 milliseconds, or one-tenth of a second. This number could be larger or smaller, or perhaps the interval is unnecessary if you aren't experiencing large volumes of incoming data. For this example, it wouldn't make any difference. Next, we read the status of the switch and update the data ref as required. It is important to keep track of the status of the switch and only update the data ref when it changes, Otherwise, the status will be sent every cycle, which is expensive time-wise on both the Arduino and the plugin, but mostly for the serial transmission of the data. Additional libraries are available for one-shot switch handling, and additionally, we're planning to include some with XPL Pro as well. 
Earlier, we specified to XPLPro a function that we want called when new data is available from data refs that we have registered. When that data is available, the function is called and we are provided a data structure that contains the handle of the data ref that changed, the element within the data ref if the data ref is an array, and of course, the new value of the data ref in either long integer or floating point, depending on what type of data ref we registered. In this example, if the handle is the beacon data ref handle, we can test the incoming value and set the LED on or off accordingly. More examples of this will be discussed in future videos. We also specified a function that will be called when XPlane and XPL Pro are ready to receive data ref and command registrations. Here we will request them and also let the plugin know if we want to receive updates when the data ref changes. The first registration we are doing is for the data ref that contains the status of the beacon light. The function will communicate with XPL Pro plugin and receive a handle to the data ref if it is found. Otherwise, the handle will be a negative value. Also note that the string value is surrounded by capital F in parentheses known as the F macro. Commonly used Arduino boards such as the Uno, the Nano, and the Mega will benefit from the use of the F macro as it forces the string to stay in program memory and out of dynamic memory, saving valuable RAM resources. If you are using an Arduino or other board that is not of AVR architecture, remove the F macro as it may prevent your sketch from compiling. If we want to receive the value associated with the data ref, we request that here. The first parameter is the handle to the data ref. The second is an update rate in milliseconds, which is important for reducing highly active data refs such as engine RPM. And the third parameter is a precision specifier. For instance, we might be only interested in engine RPM in increments of 10 RPM, so you could specify 10 here. This will be discussed further in a future video. Our intention is to control the status of the nav lights, so we register the associated data ref here. This is the function we specified to be called when X-Plane shuts down or unloads a loaded aircraft. In this example, it is not needed, but the empty function needs to be here anyway. To test our sketch, connect one side of an SPST switch to pin number 24 and the other to a ground pin on the Arduino as shown in the picture. Launch X-Plane to test. Watch the LED respond to the status of the beacon light within X-Plane and also change the position of the switch we connected to pin 24 of the Arduino board and you will see the nav lights go on and off. In the next video, we will register a command within X-Plane and use a momentary switch to trigger the command. We hope to see you there, and as always, if this video is helpful to you, please support us by liking this video and subscribing to our channel. See you next time.